Hello friends, good evening and welcome back for the last session of the weekend men's retreat and today is the last day and the last session and uh, I hope that you had a very good time with the Lord and listening to the Word of God and meditating and praying along with the Word of God. We are so grateful to God for all the resource people that He has blessed us with. Uh, such wonderful people came in to preach this retreat and uh, thank you to all of them and a big thank you to you, each one of you who are watching and who would be watching us in the future on the YouTube uh, for being here to encourage us to do this wonderful time of retreat. Okay, uh, Even before we could begin uh, the last session, uh, if you have any questions uh, pertaining to the talks or, or any question that is uh, right now on your mind, you can text us uh, in the comments, uh, comment session uh, and then we will be able to answer your questions immediately after this uh, short reflection that we are going to have. After that we will conclude with the um, Q&A session. So if you have any questions, uh, please text. Even before we could begin the session, uh, may I request all of you to just close our eyes for a minute and we shall pray. God our loving Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you especially for these two wonderful days, Lord, that you have blessed us, that you have chosen us to be here with you, Lord. Thank you for all the wonderful things that you have taught us, O Jesus, and you have spoken through us. We thank you, Lord, for all the insights and revelations. And thank you for increasing our faith in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for helping us to come closer to you. Thank you for answering our questions and clearing our doubts and questions that are there in our minds or which were there in our minds earlier. Thank you for each and every session, Lord. Lord, we submit this time to you. We surrender to you, Lord. You are the Lord God of our time, our session. We surrender our mind, our heart, our soul, our bodies and this a uh, room where we are shooting and gone live our equipments Lord we surrender Lord our houses wherever we are or whichever place we are in we pray for your precious blood to protect us from all evil cover us with your holy and precious blood protect us from every power of negativity Lord and deliver us to remain in your presence and in your glory Lord O Holy Spirit of God, we pray that you lead us by your wisdom. Put your words into our mouth, into our mind, into our heart, so that we will be truly your witness and bear fruits in abundance. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I was reminded of uh, today's gospel. We had such a beautiful uh, gospel reading and the first reading and the second reading. And I just want to read one uh, verse of John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and life in all its fullness. But I have come that they may have life, life in all its fullness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So even before uh, I could begin my talk, I thank God for this wonderful reading because uh, God wants us to have life in abundance. And that is what we have been listening to from the past two days about uh, the Word of God helping us and enabling us to come closer to Jesus and experience this abundance of life or at least helping us to take that step forward to receive and enjoy that life of God in us and our families. Okay, I want you all to, can you all, can you all see this? It's a glass of water which is very clean and pure water that I just brought it 
okay and this is our life and uh, when we are baptized when we are born on this earth and when we are baptized when we receive God we are this clean water with purity innocence and the uh, Holy Spirit dwelling within us okay and what we do after that every choice that we make every decision that we make uh, depends what we want to do with the purity and the love and this abundance of life that God has given us okay uh, we're going to we're going to do something now okay here I have this uh, food color which I got it from the kitchen and I will just add a very little portion of this food color to the water these days I'm actually doing a lot of cooking from the YouTube so probably that's why these ideas are here okay so now you see a very little portion a very small portion of that food color could actually change the color of this entire water which was pure and clean that you have seen already praise the Lord that is exactly what happens to our life when we do not listen to the Holy Spirit or when we are not in communion with God okay father beautifully shared the word of God uh, brother Ravi also was sharing such a wonderful talk and Roger had shared in the morning about how these hidden enemies come to attack us these are the ways the little little openings that we open ourselves or the little passages the little the little ways uh, the little doors or windows that we open uh, open to the enemy he enters and corrupts everything that is pure and holy in our life and what is pure and holy in our life is a gift of the Holy Spirit that God has given to us but many times because we have not been open to the Holy Spirit and we have not been alert to the Holy Spirit and sensitive to God we had been carried away with these things and lost that uh, beautiful gift of God that God has given to us I just want to talk about just two points today okay and uh, and let's see what God has to speak to us the root of all our problems is pertaining to our relation relationship you know many times we think that uh, the problems that we are having is because the problems that we are having is because of God did not give me these things and God uh, has not answered my prayer or because God did not answer it the way I wanted it to be for example when I was uh, uh, I probably didn't share the my testimony in the men's retreat but I did uh, in the women's retreat but I'll share a little bit of it uh, when I was very angry and upset with my father because uh, of his certain habits which I never liked especially his drinking habit so I was very angry and upset with him and everything stemmed out of that anger for me every other relationship that I would look at or every other relationship that I already had this anger that I had started multiplying on every other relationship and showing up on every other relationship or rather to put it in simple terms I would say what I experienced with him I started manifesting in other relationship and that started impacting other relationships so I believe that every problem that you as a man suffers or struggle today is because there is some root or the other which is connected to some relationship that relationship would have been there or it has gone years back and somebody has insulted you or hurt you or probably rejected you and they did not encourage you so that remained in your heart and that became a root cause for you today probably even if you have a very encouraging family today or you have circumstances which are very good you still carry that baggage from what has happened in that particular relationship and we tend to prolong it 
and sometimes without even our knowledge even without our knowledge uh, from the un subconscious mind we we tend to um, carry that hurt or burden carry that anger or resentment or unforgiveness or bitterness from our past relationship into our current relationship maybe some of us are married and uh, uh, we had a very very tough time especially during the uh, time of wedding or maybe uh, your in-laws were not very good to you or maybe your wife was not as you expected her to be or your children are not as uh you wanted them to be you might carry or you might be having a lot of burden of your past experiences but what has happened today is all that past experiences have made such a negative impact on our relationship today today your wife might be very good your children might have reconciled with you and they are absolutely fine and they might be your circumstances also would have been very good but the root cause of this anger or this arrogance or rudeness or unforgiveness or any kind of bitterness or you have become a, a stubborn hearted or stony hearted very hard hearted to situations because maybe initially you were a very sensitive person to uh, everything that was happening around and uh, uh, very loving and affectionate but people in course of your life would have come and attacked your sensitivity they would have attacked you so badly that today you don't care about things you really don't care about what happens to the other person because you have become so hard from within so it is not between today we need to realize that this problem that you are having today or this issue that you are having today or uh, if your relationships are not really good they are not really authentic relationships that you are having in your family life or in your uh, with your colleagues or with your friends or in your society or your neighborhood it could be that that root is connected somewhere else with some other relationship which has been terribly uh, hurt you which has terribly impacted you and years have passed by you still do have not reconciled with that person or with that situation or with that hurt and you have become today a very hard hearted person god is giving us a beautiful opportunity to return back to him brother ravi was beautifully sharing at the end of his session that uh, we need to go and confess to god we need to make a good confession and father as father shabel was uh, sharing about praying you know surrendering and totally adoring the lord and worshiping him in true sense not like how herod said i want to come and worship the child so tell me where he is to the wise men because he never wanted to worship god he considered himself as god today look look at uh, let's look at our lives and see where we have made gods for ourselves and what are the situation and what are the people whom we adore or we we have given worship or we have given first priority and preference more than jesus in our life and god wants to heal those wounds god wants to clear those baggages and clear those blocks from your life so that he will be able to penetrate into you through the power of the holy spirit and you will be able to experience that fullness of life that fullness of god that fullness of love and the grace of god in your life so that you truly become that person who is going to lead your family and because of the lockdown uh, we definitely don't have an opportunity now to go for a confession but like uh, pope francis said you could confess to god with a sincere heart and the word of god itself says in john, 1 john chapter 1 verse 9 when we ask forgiveness from god sincerely when we ask forgiveness from god god is very merciful and he will come to forgive us instantly you know this uh, today i was reflecting on something and and some beautiful uh, thoughts uh, which i was able to capture from what i was uh, reading through was uh, i will read it out to you god, that god forgives instantly 
God forgives completely. God forgives repeatedly, you know, repeatedly if you sin and go back. He will forgive the same sins hundred times maybe or thousand times maybe. Repeatedly he or continuously he forgives if you return back to him. And God forgives you freely. Uh, that's so beautiful. That's so really beautiful. And this time uh, when we don't have an opportunity to go for our confessions, uh, you tell God that you're really sorry and you let go and forgive that person who has hurt you in any relationship and once you are freed from that hurtful relationship or that experiences that you had or those events that has happened in your life you will be able to have a clean clear heart once again wherein the Holy Spirit can come and dwell so that you can experience that fullness of God in your life because God has not given up on you and he will never give up on us it is our choice whether we truly want to repent and come back to God or we want to hold on to the things that we are thinking that it is needed for us and this is the moment I need, these are the relationships that I need. Really, it's not worth carrying these burdens in our life. Really, it's not worth. The second thing that I want to um, uh, talk about is, or the last thing probably, I am only sick as my secret life is. The more you hide things, the more you will suffer. How beautiful. The more you hide things within you, the more you will struggle and suffer and go through that pain. Because uh, uh, there are these uh, great sayings of the world which says, men don't cry, men, men are not emotional. That's a lies. And many of us believe in that lies because we don't want to project ourselves as you know somebody who can cry or who can feel and uh, who is emotionally moved. We don't want to show our feelings. We are the strong men, and uh, you know it, it's a kind of prestige issue that, and people will think that you are very weak. But your weakness does not lie in these things of crying or just because you're crying you're you're not strong your strength lies in God Jesus is the strength of my life the Word of God is the strength of your life so we don't like to share our feelings we don't like to share our uh, uh, burdens even with our wives even with our spouses we we sometimes we don't share even when we are going through very very tough times we will keep it to ourselves we will fight it out and we will say I will do everything possible to get out of this situation to get out of this problem to get out of all these things that I am going through but we fail to depend on God we fail to depend on the strength of God and the strength of God is the Holy Spirit. We read in um, Romans chapter 5 verse 5, it says, The love of God is poured into our heart through the Holy Spirit. We all are wired or created to be loved and to share love. And when we don't share love and when we don't receive love, that's when our lives are broken. Whether you are four years old, whether you are an infant baby, whether you are 30 years, you are 60 years, you are 75 years, you are 80 years, you are married, you have children, you are a youngster who is studying in college or working in a corporate world, we can put up a very beautiful picture about ourselves. But you should know, this is the truth of our life that we are wired and we are made to receive love and to give love but because we don't go to God to receive that love we are unable to give that love to others and when we don't receive that connection with God is disconnected that connection there's no longer a connection with God to receive that agape love of God that's when I try to give whatever I have the little selfish love that I have and when I share I expect something in return and when I don't get I get disappointed and hurt 
and that breaks me and because I carry this brokenness within me because of my broken relationships because I was deprived of love because I was I was uh, not given the love that I was seeking because of my brokenness I go out and share only brokenness with the rest of the world including our family that's why our families and our family members are broken because they have not experienced the life of God the love of God in its fullness as a man you need to step up as the head of the family you need to step up and receive that love of God and share that love of God with the rest of your family members if I fail to do that as a man if I fail to if you fail to do that then you will be only giving the brokenness that you are experiencing in your life to your family and when they receive that brokenness they will also give back the brokenness and that's how everybody is only sharing brokenness with each other and the little love that we share here and there is not fullness of God that God is talking about the fullness of love what God is talking about is what happened on the cross when Jesus shed his blood broke his body and got wounded and terribly brutally murdered on the cross just because to express and share his love for you and for me that is our identity and God does not want us to forget this incident or this episode of love that God has for us according to John chapter 3 verse 16 he says God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life so when we believe in the sacrifice of Jesus, when we believe in this love of Jesus, when we believe in this completeness, the fullness of this love of Jesus, which he gave up on the cross for you and for me, even when we were sinners, he loved us. Even when we were not born in this world, he loved us. If you're able to realize and believe in the sacrifice of Jesus, that he loves you, no matter who you are, from where you come from, what background you come from, or whether you have a very good job, you don't have a good job, you're struggling in your life, or you want some, you're praying for some blessing and it's not happening, you're frustrated, you're angry, you're upset, you can share your brokenness with Jesus because he was broken for you he was broken and wounded just for you my dear brothers and sisters if you're able to believe in that sacrifice that whatever sin sickness pain worry anxiety trouble all that you are going through he has already taken upon himself on the cross if you believe in that sacrifice and if you have that faith that what I am going through, what I am struggling, what brokenness I had in my past relationships or whatever I had messed up in my life, Jesus has already paid a price for it and he purchased me from the devil to set me free. If you believe in that truth, then the second reading of today, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 very beautifully says by the wounds of Jesus you are healed it doesn't matter whether you have a physical ailment or a mental wound or an emotional wound or spiritually you're disturbed emotionally you're disturbed and you're broken today when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today when you accept what Jesus has done on the cross for you personally personally if you accept that gift of Jesus that message of love of Jesus you are going to receive that fullness of God you're going to receive that complete healing that God is talking about the Word of God says heaven and earth will pass away but my word will not pass away 
as the rain comes down to wet the ground and it does not return until it wets the ground so is the word of God that comes from the mouth of God every word that Jesus has spoken to us every word that God has spoken to us will come to pass but if we do not know what those beautiful precious words are then we will continue to suffer in our life if you really want to experience that fullness of God that healing of God the healing in your relationships the healing in your family the healing in your financial uh, area the healing in your job the healing uh, in areas where you're really struggling and you don't have a hope in that despair in that hopeless situation the Lord will resurrect you because we are resurrected Christians we are Easter people we rise up with Jesus we will rise up in every situation of our life provided you keep your faith in Jesus and in his love and in all that he has done for you on the cross and finally I want to conclude with one word of God which says in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 many people quote this word of God even without understanding what it is God will work everything for our good for those who love him if you really want everything that has been messed up in your life every situation everything to work out for your good you need to love back or you need to give that love back or at least acknowledge that love of Jesus in your heart by having a relationship with him and when you have a relationship with Jesus you will see this fullness of God that God will bring to pass in your life and in your family and in everything that you do because that's what the Bible says that every work of your hand will be blessed if you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 1 to 14 talks about all the blessings that God wants to give you every work of your hand will be blessed and if you believe really believe in this truth then you need to surrender your life today pray to him make a good confession to Jesus and the next opportunity that you get to go for a good confession make a good confession because God will not waste anything in your life even if you had bad experiences negative experiences terrible things that has happened God is going to take all of those things and make and create something beautiful for you so that you will truly be a testimony of Jesus and a testimony of God and his love in this world and men in a very special way you are called to be the face of God in the family you are called to be that face of love in the family if you are that face of love of God in the family then your child will never ever have problems with connecting with people or even having faith in God because the child already has seen the face of God in the family in the form of love so I wish you all the best and I wish that you had wonderful time during this time of retreat and thank you once again for watching us live and praying for us and uh, uh, praying and participating in this retreat uh, so please do not go we will pray and then we will have uh, Q&A's and if you have any questions please go ahead and type your questions uh, we will answer those questions so sure I will uh, request Roger to come I will request Roger to come uh, before that we will just make a prayer concluding prayer let's close our eyes and pray take this moment of silence to surrender your life to Jesus surrender your heart and all the brokenness and all the wounds and hurts all your relationships your family members your friends your colleagues and if you have any of those secret life secret relationships 
that you know are destroying your family that you know is destroying your marriage that you know is destroying your career that you know is destroying your education surrender all those incidents events experiences surrender all those relationships and those people to jesus now and imagine yourself standing under the cross of jesus hold on to the cross of jesus the feet of jesus and ask for a complete healing ask for forgiveness for your sins and tell him you are truly sorry for everything that you have done and that you have failed to do and you have forgotten to do God our loving father we thank you and we praise you for this time we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy lord you wait for us to just take that one step and choose you above everything lord and the moment we move even if we move towards you you will come running to embrace us with your mercy lord and your mercy is never come to an end there is no expiry date there is no end time for your mercy lord this evening lord as a family we we ask for your mercy on each one of us who is watching this video who is part of this program and our families lord let your mercy flow into us and wash us from every sin lord deliver us from every lies of the devil deliver us from every brokenness deliver us lord from all evil and all evil people deliver us lord from every relationship that does not lead us to you everything that is in from your kingdom that has grown into us lord that has grown in our families grown in our lives grown in our imaginations grown in our hearts let all those evil be removed and be burnt in the fire of the holy spirit lord and let your holy spirit fill our hearts to live a life that is pleasing to you as your word says in romans chapter 8 verse 26 when we do not know how to pray the holy spirit of god will pray on our behalf the holy spirit of god will intercede on our on our behalf so that we will be able to experience that fullness of god in our lives the holy spirit will intercede with deep sighs and groanings and stand and plead for us to be blessed o oh god we pray that you once again enkindle that fire of your spirit within us and empower us to be truly your witnesses as we are preparing ourselves for this great feast of pentecost lord we pray that you prepare our hearts and minds to receive your power and to witness your power and to receive our healing and experience that healing in the fullness and share that healing with our family all this prayer we make in jesus precious name amen All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen peace be with you
Okay, so we have come almost to the end of the retreat. And um, if there are any questions, uh, you could please text. In the meantime, I will invite Roger, my husband, <laughs> um, and thank him for this lovely retreat and the sessions that he has shared and inspired all men. Uh, really, it is a, a true blessing to have you as the head of our family and um, the way the Lord is leading us. Uh, <laughs> I'm so grateful to God and thank you so much. Okay, I'll just check for the questions. As we wait for questions because we uh, don't yet have enough queries, I really wish to thank each one of you, my brothers, who have joined us during this two days of uh, retreat for men. Uh, I really appreciate those people who have been praying for this retreat. I wish to uh, personally thank the Holy Spirit Interactive Intercessory Groups in Dubai, in, in other Emirates of the United Arab Emirates, and the intercessory group of Hyderabad and other places. I thank for, I thank personally. I don't know people by name, but I know that there are several of you who have shared these videos on Facebook and on WhatsApp and on um, other platforms. I really thank for helping us um, proclaim the word in the best possible manner and share the word to as many as possible. Uh, I request you and I humbly ask you to continue to support us in our endeavors. We will never fail to come forward to accept the calling and invitation of our Lord to proclaim his word and build his kingdom as long as he wants us to do that. And with the limited resources that we have right now, we will never look at look into it as shortcoming but we will make the best use of what we have to give you the best that the word of god has to offer you so thank you once again um we really don't have any questions okay uh, great <laughs> makes my life easy <laughs> uh, i just want to uh, probably uh, just throw some light on this question uh, father has mentioned that we need to have uh, uh, worship and prayer basically have a personal connection with God yeah. as the head of the family uh, what do you think a man should do pertaining to this aspect of prayer uh, how should he he initiate or uh, how should he lead the family into prayer I think that's a very simple question because the answer to that question is just as how Christ is the head of the bride and the church, the husband is the head of the family, and therefore St. Paul urges husbands to be like Christ, who is the head of the church. And just as how Jesus led us into prayer every day, just as how he taught us to pray, just as how he initiated every time and, and invited his friends, encouraged his friends by his own example of spending time in prayer, including during the times when he was in not very comfortable situations, and also during the time when he was about to be arrested. He took along with himself three of his disciples, and he asked them to remain with him and pray. So by his own example, Jesus teaches us that in good times and in bad we are called to pray so as the heads of your families as men especially we are not given the responsibility to pray but we are given the vocation to lead our families into prayer we are meant to lead our family into prayer and prayer is not just a conversation with god it is the acknowledgement it is a conscious acknowledgement of god's presence in us and in our family when we, as men, as husbands and fathers, when we encourage our family, teach our family, and um, ensure that our family comes together to pray, we are uh, in, a in a very conscious way and in a very unique, extraordinary way, giving a witness as the domestic church 
of the presence of God in our home and in our family. We're giving a witness that God is the one who is our provider. It is God who is our sustainer. He is our fort. He is our uh, refuge. And he is the one whom we worship and believe in. So it is important and necessary for the man, the head of the family, to invite and ensure and encourage in a very loving way, not enforce it as a rule of law, but to encourage family with love and in a pastoral way. It's, uh, I, I, I'm, I wish to insist this word pastoral because even though as husbands and fathers we may not be the ministerial priests, but we are by baptism priests of Christ. We are meant to worship Christ and we are meant to draw our family to worship Christ. So we have to show pastoral attitude towards our wives, our children, our parents, our relatives, our elders, or whoever is living with us as a domestic church. We have to be pastoral in our approach to encourage them and invite them to prayer. Um, I have two beautiful experiences or examples of how when men lead the family, especially in prayer, uh, what great things happen. You know, I, I already shared about how uh, I didn't like my father, but when I met the Lord, I was able to forgive him. And then uh, within a span of one year, my father changed and he accepted Christ. And from that day, uh, you know, till today, I would say, because I know now he is in heaven with Jesus and definitely praying for me and my family. Uh, Every day I have seen daddy waking up at 3 in the morning and uh, doing his personal prayer, reading the word of God and he will pray and ensure he prays for all his children. And especially when I used to go to preach the word of God or going for some program, he will ensure me and he will tell, I'm going to pray for you. I prayed, you, I prayed for you in the morning. I prayed for you in the mass. You know, that used to give me a lot of courage and strength a support uh, from my father because he was a man of prayer and um, when he passed away it was very difficult for me uh, you know uh, to understand that um, he is not there physically praying for me you know it was very tough for me uh, but I remember a priest telling me once I, when I went for confession it was very difficult so I shared with that priest so he told me and made it very simple to me and he said he asked me where is daddy now so I told daddy is with Jesus now. So when you pray or when you are attending the mass, who comes there? I said Jesus comes. Okay, and this priest beautifully said, so if daddy is with Jesus, so whenever you call Jesus and whenever you pray or whenever you attend mass, when Jesus comes, daddy also comes with you. And you know he is praying for you. So that kind of convinced me and broke even that, uh, fear or that kind of uh, lack in me that I don't have my father physically present here okay and uh, after my wedding God fulfilled even that desire or that uh, uh, you know vacuum of a person praying for you so I know my husband prays for me and uh, especially before any talk I have this thing and asking him to pray for me before I go for a talk or a session or I text him or uh, I know he is there to pray for me. So that's a very strong strength or that's a very strong feeling or it's a very um, a strong thing like a mountain you can say. You know I can only compare it with that. It's a great strength that women uh, receive and as a daughter, as a family I receive. Uh, I received it when my father was praying and then when my husband prays for me and leads us into prayer. So that's a real blessing and if you experience it uh, nothing like that because every time you pray God comes amidst us. I think uh, it is necessary for me at this moment to uh, mention the fact because she has uh, because Jesse has uh, mentioned about the testimony the witness of a praying father a praying husband that is her dad in her family. I want to add to it uh, about my own father it is uh, the reason uh, such as the fathers that she has had and I have had who've been men of prayer 
who have encouraged their family to come together to pray, who have been the source of bringing Jesus into our home, who have been the source of bringing Jesus into our lives when we were children. And then they made it not just as a beautiful thing for the family to do, but made it as a habit to pray uh, in the family as a family and being led by the father i re i don't remember any instance i mean i could probably count on my fingertips uh, the instances where uh, my father my dad would have probably uh, missed uh, bringing us all together as a family to sit together pray the rosary pray the novena or uh, you know uh, uh, other devotional other devotions that we do it's only because he was taught by his parents uh, and he was given as inheritance the gift of prayer and leading the family into prayer. And if, if my wife and I are doing what we are doing, which is um, collaborating with God to establish his kingdom within us and around us, it's also very much to a large extent because we were formed by our fathers uh, who set an example of establishing God first in our lives. It's, uh, it's Dada who always ensured that Jesus has to be our priority. He ensured that we worship God as a family. I, uh, I always tell my wife, I don't like going for Mass uh, just like that individually or just she and me. I like to go for Mass with everybody who is part of my home. That is my family, my father, my mother, my younger brother and my aunt who lives with us. I wish and I always like to go for Mass together because that's how we were taught. We were taught to worship God as a family. So it's very important for us to remember that as men, we are given the vocation to lead our family into prayer, just as how Jesus leads his family, that is you and me, into prayer. Thank you. Okay, I have a question from Clive. He says, uh, if the husband as the head of the family is unable to make decisions, and the wife does it in his place what impact does it have if it would on the family and what uh, perception would it form about the husband or father in the family okay thank you clive for that question it's a very good it's a very relevant and uh, an awesome question F the first thing that uh, or rather the there are two people who come to my mind right now uh, exactly pertaining to the situation or the question that you've asked. The first person is Saint Monica, the mother of Saint Augustine. She was married to a man who never used to pray. She was married to a man who did not make the decisions that God expected that family, the head of the family, to make, which is why in the earlier stages of life, Augustine was a vagabond. He would just go around doing things that was not at all pleasing. Forget about pleasing to God. It was not pleasing to man as well. At a very young age, he was promiscuous. He was, uh, you know, uh, stealing uh, things. It is written in his own uh, testimony, in his own confessions. But Monica was the one who made the decisions for the family to a large extent, especially decisions pertaining to the salvation of that family. And what was the fruit of the decisions that she made? Her son became a saint and uh, her husband received the gift of salvation on his deathbed. So uh, uh, when, when, a, when there is a situation where the man is not able to make decisions for whatever reason, okay, uh, that is not an excuse. Uh, reasons may not be excuses, but there are reasons where practically the man is not able to make decisions. Um, you know, loss of mind or, um, you know, certain uh, practical reasons why he is not able to make decisions. In that, in those moments, the woman, the wife has to step forward. But when she steps forward to make decisions, she has to make decisions which glorify God and continue to build the family as a domestic church. The other person that comes to my mind is, Saint Rita of Cassia. Saint Rita was married to a soldier and he was not very close to God as she was, but she never stopped uh, making decisions for the good of the family. He, was, he would always think of very uh, robust and arrogant ways of making decisions for the family. He was a very short-tempered man, her husband, but she was a lover of Christ. She believed that she has to make discernments and not just random decisions. And it is because of that, she later on in life had to join the convent and then she uh, continued to 
live a, a virtuous and heroic uh, life and then later on uh, the church declared her a saint but that is only because she's had to step forward to make decisions for her family now these are extraordinary saints but this is possible even today when the man is unable to make decisions it is the responsibility now the question is why should the wife make decisions when the man is not able when the husband is not able to make decisions simply because the word of god says you are no longer two but one if you are one body one spirit in christ because you are married and you have entered into a covenant with god as one not as two they are no longer one two flesh but one then you have to do what your husband is unable to do for whatever reason and god honors that god blesses it there are so many instances in the old testament where women have made decisions because of because men could not make decisions it was it was sarah who you know made the choice of um uh, hagar. Uh, hagar and then it was it was um, uh, bathsheba who came and recommended to king david when uh, absalom went rogue and uh, anointed himself as king but it was it was uh, bathsheba who came and said to king david that you promised that my our son Solomon is going to be the king and based on that advice uh, David instantly reacted so there are so many instances even in scripture where women came forward but that is only when the man fails in his responsibility and I hope men don't take excuses and make excuses to fail in the responsibility of being the head of the family and making righteous decisions for the family and uh, <coughs> I think these decisions should be for the welfare of the family even when the women is making for whatever reasons that uh, Roger has already explained uh, if the women is making decision it should be for the welfare of the family and in the plan of God okay uh, it should not be out of controlling the family or having selfish motives and selfish intentions of or uh, taking care of everything and uh, uh, because we have seen this uh, many people uh, many families rather wherein the woman takes control because she says I am earning more than you so I will make the decision as to what the family or how these family affairs have to run uh, I think these are not from truly from God yes. because if for some reason the husband is not able to step up and take that decisions and lead forward the wife is expected to help the husband to make the decision but for the welfare of the family and the final thing is whether the husband makes the decision or the wife makes the decision uh, it should be always in consultation with each other because many times uh, even men forget to ask or even consult the wife or the women in the house because they think okay I need to make decision I don't care what she thinks uh, but definitely somewhere it hurts but the same decision that you are already having when you discuss with your wife or you discuss with the the women in the family and then you bring the discernment of God and do what is right then I don't think anybody will have a problem or issue with that kind of uh, discernment and decision well uh, as a matter of fact yeah, what she said is absolutely right but as a matter of fact St. Thomas Aquinas explains that when uh, when a husband makes a decision even if it is not to the liking of the family the family needs to abide by that decision this is not out of force because but this is out of the word of god where the god where, where our lord expects the husband to make decisions now when the decision is wrong the fruit of the decision is borne by everybody in the family now when that happens the husband should learn the lesson that even though my people knew that I was making the wrong decision they still allowed me to make the decision because they respect my word mm. so now it adds more responsibility that the next decision that I make for the good of my family I have to ensure that it is a well discerned decision great Good. any other questions can talk about the youth retreat. Okay, so I think the, we don't have any more questions and we don't want to prolong <laughs> and wait for questions. But if there are questions later on, we are most welcome. To, we will answer it in the comment section. We will text our answers. Now, um, at the end, now we have come to uh, come at the come to the end of our retreat of the men's retreat. So we have a very exciting announcement to make. Next weekend, we are going to have a youth retreat. Yes. Two dedicated days only for youth and 
this time we're going to have more number of sessions for a lesser uh, amount a lesser volume duration. of time measure of time duration of time and <clears throat> And we're going to have more new resource persons from different parts of India who uh, will uh, be providing us resources or providing us the talks. So it's going to be very exciting. Please pass on the word to as many young people as you can <coughs> among your friend circles, in your ministries. And that reminds me, please understand that you may be doing a great work in your parish you may be doing great work in your ministry but it does not mean that you don't encourage other people to be part of other ministerial work we as holy spirit interactive we will be failing in our duty if we don't encourage our own people to appreciate the work of other people and support the work of other ministries so let us remove this idea that we are self-sufficient and what we do we will do it for ourselves and we will not be concerned with what other people are doing when moses when joshua came and told moses look they are prophesying they are praying they are doing this and doing that and moses had no problem with it because what they were doing was bringing glory to god so please understand it is not about who is preaching or which ministry is organizing things. If it is an authentic way of proclamation of the word of God, you are bound by conscience to support those initiatives because we are one body in Christ. So please encourage young people to attend next weekend's youth retreat. We are excited to organize it and we are excited to bring forth the word of God to you. And we, um, we urge you to support us by sharing the news, sharing the videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and pray for us because we assure you of our prayers for you and your family. Thanks for attending. And we will conclude with prayer. Some prayer intentions are there. Yeah. Please pray for broken uh, world, world today can bear the sigma. Okay, please pray for all the men suffering in Gulf women and kids due to heat wave, lack of medicines. Okay, we've uh, we've ha we've had uh, requests to pray for women. We've had requests to pray for families who are in the Middle East, in the Gulf, because of the heat and various other intentions. Um, let us offer a, a prayer for them. God, our loving Father, we thank you and we praise you. We worship and adore you. We thank you for the seeds of your word that you have planted in our hearts today. We thank you for the storm, the tornado, the cyclone of grace that you have uh, stirred in our hearts, in our minds today because of this retreat. And we thank you for the numerous people who watched it and will continue to watch it. Lord, you said in your word that when two people uh, agree on something here on earth, your Father in heaven will grant that to, uh, to us. And you've also said in your word, seek, you will find, knock, and it shall be open to you. So we are knocking, we are seeking, we are asking, Lord, that you pour out your cool, gentle breeze of love and compassion upon the people who are suffering, those who are destitute, those who are homeless, those who are experiencing uh, uh, discomfort and, and pain and suffering due to climatic situations situations those who are experiencing suffering because of sicknesses and infirmities right now in the authority that you have given us as your children we speak to those spirits of infirmities those spirits of sicknesses in the name of jesus we bind you spirits of sicknesses we bind you spirits of infirmities by the root and we cast you at the feet of our lord jesus to be judged into the deepest and darkest pits of hell mm -hmm. you will never ever return back to us you will never return back to the people of god and you are out by the root and you have been declared crushed broken and completely destroyed by the blood of jesus by the merits of jesus on the cross and we declare victory we declare authority over us we declare health we declare power we declare pro uh, providence we declare peace we declare unity we declare love we declare joy and we declare wisdom we declare anointing we declare protection we declare your presence in the persons who are watching us right now and who will watch in the future we declare all all of this in our own lives in our own family in our own home and in our ministry we declare liberty and freedom from the 
captivity of bondages and sin and we declare that there will be enormous grace in marriages to be fortified and fruitful we declare enormous grace in the relationship of parents and children and we declare enormous grace in relationship between elders and youngsters in the family and the ones who are listening right now in the days to come will become mighty witnesses mighty testimonies in this world of darkness and bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus the most holy trinity and the holy catholic church in the holy name and the mighty and powerful name of Jesus we pray amen, amen. our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen Uh, we wish to thank once again very sincerely and with a very warm heart of love god's love we wish to thank reverend father richard john the director of the youth commission of the archdiocese of hyderabad we wish to thank reverend father shabel who is the assistant superior of the congregation of st john in arul ashram pondicherry and we wish to thank our dear brother ravi naidu from people of praise community uh, bangalore india and i wish to thank my wife and I I also wish to thank the Holy Spirit for giving me the grace to proclaim the word of God. Thank you to all of you and yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you and God bless you all. Yeah, God bless all of you and we will see you and your youngsters next week the coming weekend the next weekend for the youth retreat. God bless and have a beautiful evening and may you be filled with the Holy Spirit. Take care. Bye.